Hello everyone, welcome again to Biofluid Mechanics and uh, today we, as we discussed last uh, lecture, we're going to be uh, looking at the uh, most simplified version of the cardiovascular circuit analogy in, the, in an electric circuit that includes all these elements that we've been discussing so far, the resistors, the inductors, the capacitors, the diodes to simulate the valves, and now the uh, time-dependent capacitor or compliance to simulate uh, the ventricle actually expanding and contracting and actually uh, driving the entire circuit. So as I said, this is a, the most simplified version of anything that can include all of or, or, or the behavior of the cardiovascular circuit. And uh, and uh, obviously more elements can be added to it to, to look at different compartments and different effects if you're interested in, in specifically uh, certain locations. Uh, but, uh, but again, this is what can be done at the most simplified level to encompass all of the cardiovascular circuit, the closed loop circuit of the cardiovascular system. So um, let me go to the notes. So this will be biofluid mechanics. And this is lecture number 22. So, um, we're going to look at the simplified model of the <clears throat> cardiovascular system. Let's uh, underline this as well. So, the minimum that we can do is a five state variable. model can be used to represent <clears throat> the entire cardiovascular flow field system including the left atrium, we're going to call that LA, mitral valve, we're going to call that MV, and remember uh, the blood flows into the left atrium from the pulmonary circulation, the oxygenated blood goes into the left atrium, then from the left atrium through the mitral valve it goes to the left ventricle. We're going to call that LV. Then to the aortic valve. I'm going to call that AV. Flows into the aorta. Aorta. Call that AO. And then into the systemic circulation. So this is a very reduced order lump parameter model as it only has these five elements or these five uh, state variables representing the pressure of the left ventricle, uh, the left atrium, sorry, the pressure of the left ventricle, uh, the pressure in the flow uh, in the aorta, and then the pressure in the systemic circulation. Okay, obviously there's a lot of things missing from this representation because as the flow goes into the systemic circulation, then it goes into the venous system, uh, and then it returns into the right heart. So it includes a right atrium. It should include a an atrioventricular valve in between the two, and then it should include a right uh, ventricle. <clears throat> and then from the left, the, from the right ventricle, it should go into the pulmonary artery, which then it will go into the pulmonary circulation. So there should be another, a whole entire system composing the right circulation or the pulmonary circulation with its corresponding driving which is the right heart however we're actually embedding all of that into the systemic circulation so all of that including the right circulation the right heart and the pulmonary circulation are all embedded into the systemic circulation as a whole remember when we introduce 
the physiology, the anatomy and physiology of the, of the cardiovascular circuit, we mentioned in several occasions that the, the left ventricle, which is in charge of actually pumping blood to the systemic circulation, to the entire body, is about 11 times more powerful than the right ventricle. And therefore, because essentially the, the pulmonary circulation offers about 11 times less resistance to the motion of flow than the systemic circulation. So it's, it's only, it's less than 10%, the pulmonary circulation resistance is less than 10% of that of the systemic circulation. So it's, um, it's an option in a most simplified parameter model, long parameter model, that we embed the entire pulmonary circulation in here, including the right heart as it doesn't actually represent much, or not, it's not that it doesn't represent much, it's just a small proportion of what the left heart can do. Unless we are specifically um, interested in knowing what happens at any particular location of the pulmonary circulation or the right heart, in case there's an anomaly, or in case there's a pathological condition in, in, in which we're interested in, in, in looking at specific values of pressures and flows in the right circulation, then, then we would include that particular one, as we'll see in, in, in later lectures. So the systemic, systemic circulation, yes, oh yes, includes the peripheral arteries. So everything that stems out of the aorta, including well the carotid arteries that go to the brain and the subclavian arteries that go to the arms, and then the descending aorta that splits into the femoral arteries and everything that goes into the lower body and everything that goes into the vital organs, everything, uh, the peripheral arteries stemming out of the aorta, the arterioles, the capillaries, the venules, the veins, everything. Then the, ra the right atrium, the right ventricle, including the atrioventricular valve in between the two, pulmonary artery, pulmonary, pulmonary circulation, and pulmonary veins, and pulmonary veins. So, as you can see, we've actually effectively simplified this in a major, major way because we took an entire set of the circulation. Okay, remember, the circulation is mostly broken up into two. The left circulation, which includes systemic, and the right circulation, which includes the pulmonary. And then there's a parallel one, which is called the coronary one, which we've also included into this systemic circulation. All of that is embedded and compiled into it. But that's okay if we're only interested in what happens in the heart itself and we're looking at, for example, actual arterial pressure, the aorta, or ventricular function, and so on. All right, so let's draw the circuit. So the circuit will look something like this. So we start with the pressure of the left atrium. It's a function of time, so we have a note for that. And then we have a corresponding compliance of the left atrium. And then this, there is a resistance of the mitral valve and a corresponding diode or representing the valve of the mitral valve that separates the pressure in the left atrium from the pressure in the left ventricle. And the pressure of the left ventricle is connected to its own compliance value. The compliance of the left ventricle, which is a function of time. And it's going to be dictated by the function that we uh, formulated last class. 
So there's a resistance here due to the uh, aortic valve and a diode representing a valve, the aortic valve, that prevents flow from coming in the opposite direction and also opens only when there is a specific pressure difference across. Then we have another node here representing the pressure of the aorta. And we have a corresponding capacitor of the aorta. So the capacitance or compliance of the aorta is indicated by CAO. Then we have a resistance of the aorta. Then we have an inductance of the aorta, a corresponding flow rate. QAO, and remember that for every capacitor we'll have a pressure as a state variable, and for every inductor we'll have a flow as a state variable. And then finally, we have a systemic pressure connected to a compliance of the systemic circulation in a resistor. For the systemic circulation. We are not adding an inductance for the systemic circulation. We could, but in past experiences, we've noticed that that actually doesn't make a difference. It just adds an extra stay variable, but it doesn't make a difference in the solution. It doesn't affect the solution. And this is how we close. You notice that there's no pump. There's no pump because the whole system is actually driven by the function that controls the left ventricular compliance. All right, so we have the pressure in the left atrium, the pressure of the left ventricle, the pressure in the aorta, the flow in the aorta, and the pressure in the systemic circulation as the five state variables. Remember, a pressure connected to each of the compliances and a flow connected to each of the inductances. In addition, we have in each of these compliances, we have a flow coming in which can actually go out depending on what the gradient of the pressure here is. If the, the, the rate of change of the pressure is positive, the flow will come in. If the pressure rate, uh, rate of change of the pressure is negative, so if it's decreasing, then the flow will go out. So this is QLA, flow going into the atrium. That one we will need to cancel. We will need to eliminate from the set of equations. It's not a state variable. Then we have one here called Q. LV, flow into the left ventricle, which can also come in or go out. We will have to eliminate that too because that's not part of the state variables. We have Q1. We're going to call this, instead of calling uh, this flow into the aorta because we all already have a QAO, which is a state variable, we're going to call this Q1. We have to eliminate. And then we have a, we're going to call this, instead of calling it Q systemic, we're going to call it Q2 which we also have to eliminate, right? And then remaining here, we have uh, the flow through the mitral valve, which we have to eliminate, QMB. It's not a state variable. This is not connected to a, to a compliant, to a, an inductor. And then here we have flow into the aortic valve, which we'll have to eliminate. And um, in here, which is the same as going around, but I'm going to draw it. Uh, I'm going to draw it down here. We have Q systemic, which we have to eliminate too. Anything that has an X, we have to eliminate. Anything that has a check mark, we have to keep in the set of equations. Okay. So again, the systemic resistance includes the resistance of you know, the descending aorta, the peripheral arteries to the aorta, the femoral arteries, the venules, the veins, the capillary, I'm sorry, the capillary, the, the arterioles, the capillaries, the venules, the veins, includes the right heart and everything, including the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary valve. Everything is embedded into this resistance of the aorta, so of the systemic circulation. So our cis includes a combination 
<clears throat> of the arteries plus arterioles plus capillaries plus venules plus veins and this is what we call the systemic actually it's just systemic vascular resistance that is the actual systemic circulation but it also includes the resistance of the tricuspid valve plus the resistance of the pulmonary valve plus the entire pulmonary assistance which includes the pulmonary arteries the pulmonary uh, arterioles the pulmonary capillaries in contact with the uh, uh, the uh, alveoli of the of the lungs uh, the pulmonary venules the pulmonary veins and everything else so this is what's called the pulmonary vascular i'm sorry it would just be this one right here the pulmonary vascular resistance pvr this is the um tricuspid valve and this one right here is the pulmonary valve pulmonary valve so these are the two valves on the right heart so all of that is included into the systemic resistance what we call R S I S Y S. so if we use the same order the resulting state variables are as follows so y of t is equal to pressure of the left atrium pressure of the left ventricle pressure in the aorta flow through the aorta which is essentially the uh, ejection from the heart and the systemic pressure again notice that there is no pump as the circuit is driven by CLV by the compliance of the left ventricle which is a function of time and again it will be uh, formulated using the equations that we derived last class so the idea again is here to form a system y dot of t some coefficient matrix times a state variable plus some independent term b of t okay that's the idea right so we have to derive these matrix after we take the resulting equations from this circuit which are easy to derive and then we uh, reduce those equations using kvl and kcl so that we only end up with five unknowns in those five equations all right now one characteristic of the system is that we have two valves as you can see we have the mitral valve and the aortic valve and therefore we're going to have step functions controlling the flow through those valves depending <coughs> on whether this pressure is larger than this pressure or smaller or this pressure is larger than this pressure or smaller so the mitral valve will open when the left atrial atrial pressure is larger than the ventricular pressure so when this pressure is larger than this pressure this valve will open letting flow through but if the left ventricular pressure is higher than the left atrial pressure then the valve will close not letting any flow through in that particular direction same thing here the aortic valve will open only when the left ventricular pressure is higher than the aortic pressure if the left ventricular pressure is smaller than the aortic pressure then the valve will close and it will not actually let any flow through or in the opposite direction okay so that leads to four possible states the states will be or switch states when this one is open and this one is open when this one is open and this one is closed when this one is closed and this one is open or when this one is closed and this one is closed so four possible states all right so let's derive the equations
and see what they look like. These are relatively simple. Okay, the first is uh, Faraday's law for uh, the left atrial pressure is equal to QLA, which we have to eliminate. This one is the state variable, but this one we have to eliminate. The second one is also Faraday's law for the left ventricle, but the left ventricular compliance is a function of time, so we cannot directly take it out of the derivative. PLV is equal to Q into the left ventricle. We have to eliminate this, and we have to keep this one because that one's a state variable. The third equation is C of the aorta. The pressure of the aorta as it changes as a function of time is equal to Q1. We have to eliminate this and we have to keep this one. Then we have um, Ohm's and, and Reese's law for the pressure between the aorta and the systemic circulation. Pressure difference between those two is equal to the inductance in the aorta times how the flow changes as a function of time plus the resistance in the aorta times the flow in the aorta. This one is kept, is kept, is kept, and is kept. These are all state variables. And finally, in the systemic circulation, the systemic pressure changes the function of time times the compliance of the systemic circulation equals Q2, which we have to eliminate, and this one we have to keep. All right, so we have five equations, but we have a total of uh, nine unknowns. So we have to eliminate these four unknowns, QLA, QLV, Q1, and Q2. And in order to do that, we have to rely on, um, we need to rely on QCL and QVL. So we need to eliminate QLA, QLV, Q1, Q2, using KCL at the different nodes. We also need to incorporate the valve equations. into this okay and this is in order to formulate the switch states all right so let's uh continue with these And uh, let's look at KCL at LA, Kirchhoff current law at the left ventricular node. So we have Q systemic coming in is equal to QLA plus Q of the mitral valve. Okay, that one's pretty straightforward. In this particular node, the flow that comes in is a systemic flow which we have to eliminate. And what goes out is QLA and QMB, which we also have to eliminate. We cannot keep any of those two. But we know that uh, the Q systemic, if we look at this flow, is if, if this is a flow that goes between this node and this node, and there's only a resistance in between. At least it's the way we model it. So we can just directly use Ohm's law to eliminate that. So this will be the systemic pressure minus the left atrial pressure divided by the systemic resistance. Pretty straightforward. So I'll lose the pages here. So it will be this pressure minus this pressure divided by this resistance directly through Ohm's law. That's the Q systemic, Q circulating through the bottom of this branch. 
and Q and V, Q at the mitral valve is PLA minus PLV. So the pressure of the left atrium divided by the pressure of the left ventricle or minus the pressure of the left ventricle divided by the resistance of the mitral valve times the step function of PLA minus PLV. Okay, assuming that there is no trigger pressure, that it would just simply open when the pressure differential is positive across the valve. So it would be this pressure minus this pressure divided by this resistance that would make that flow times the step function because this one is only one directional. It would only be when this pressure is larger than this pressure. If this pressure is smaller than this pressure, this will be zero. And that's exactly what this step function is saying. There. Okay. We can do the same thing. KCL at the left ventricle node. And at the left ventricular node, the flow that comes in is the mitral valve flow. And that is equal to the flow of the left ventricle plus the flow of the aortic valve. Okay. The left ventricle is, so this is the, the flow that we're looking to eliminate from the set of equations. And this is the flow that we're looking to eliminate from the set of equations too. Left atrium, left ventricle flow. So we have to find a corresponding equation for the mitral valve flow, which we already have here, and another corresponding equation for the aortic valve flow. And similarly, since the aortic valve is a diode, the aortic valve flow will be the pressure of the left ventricle minus the pressure of the aorta divided by the resistance of the aortic valve times the step function of the left ventricular pressure minus the aortic pressure. So when it's, when that difference is positive, the flow, the, this, this step function will be one. When the difference is negative, the step function will be zero. So the flow on the aortic valve will be determined by the difference between these two pressures divided by this resistance through Ohm's law, but it would only exist if this difference is positive. If the difference is negative because of this check valve, it will be zero. And that's what the step function is doing. All right, so we got we have an expression for uh, QAV in terms of state variables only. Remember, these two are state variables. Um, we can also establish QCL at the aortic node. And at the aortic node, we have the Q at the aortic valve coming in is equal to Q1 plus Q aorta, which we can keep because that is the... Um, that is the um, uh, the one of the state variables. This one we have to eliminate. So similarly, QCL at the systemic node says Q of the aorta coming in is equal to Q2 plus Q systemic, which we've already established what it is all the way up here. Q systemic is in terms of state variables, this and this, this is all state variables. So we keep those, right? All right, furthermore, when we introduce these into the state equations, So we have the first equation will look like CLA, DPLA, DT is equal to systemic pressure minus left atrial pressure divided by R cis minus PLA minus PLB 
atrial pressure and ventricular pressure divided by the resistance of the mitral valve times the step function of PLA minus PLB. And I am omitting the time dependency on those just for space purposes. Okay. The next equation, let me bring that up, is the equation of the left ventricle. And notice that that equation we have to expand. We have to apply chain rule to these derivatives, which we did last class. So you know how it goes. This one times the derivative of this one times this one times the derivative of this one. So it will go like this. So this is equation number one. The second equation is CLV, which is a function of time, times DPLV dt plus dclv as a function of time times plv as a function of time is equal to the flow into the um into the ventricle which is pla minus plv this one up here rmv times h of PLA minus PLV minus PLV minus P aorta divided by the resistance of the aortic valve times H PLV minus P aorta. Okay, that's equation number two. Equation number three will go like this. CAO, DPAO, DT. So it's at the um, aorta. Is equal to PLV minus PAO divided by the resistance of the aortic valve. I'm sorry, this is a function of time and this is a function of time times the step function of that valve, which is PLV minus P aorta minus QAO as a function of time. The next one is simply um, stays exactly the same. There's nothing that we need to do to it because every term in that equation, in equation number four, is already a state variable. Okay, and the last equation, the systemic compliance times DP systemic DT is equal to Q into the systemic circulation, um, or I'm sorry, Q2, which is QAO minus Q systemic, which is R or P systemic minus P of the left atrium divided by R systemic. And that's it. You notice if these equations, every single term here is a state variable. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are all state variables. This one, this one, this one, and this one are state variables. This one, this one, this one, and this one, state variables. Pressure systemic, Q aorta, pressure systemic, PLA. So all we need to do now is just reorganize these equations so that we isolate the derivatives on the left-hand side, the derivative of each of the state variables on the left-hand side, and then push everything else to the right-hand side. So reorganizing. So what we'll have is pressure of the left atrium is equal to minus one over R systemic compliance of the left atrium times PLA plus one over R systemic CLA 
times pressure with systemic circulation minus PLA minus PLB divided by R of the mitral valve CLA times the step function that corresponds to these differences. Okay, so I'm omitting now the argument of the step function. Number two, a little longer equation, D of the left ventricle, of the pressure of the left ventricle, as a function of time, is equal to one or negative one over the compliance of the left ventricle, which is a function of time, times the derivative of this compliance of the left ventricle, a term we explored last time, pressure of the left ventricle, plus the two valves, one is PLA minus PLV, divided by CLV, which is a function of time, times RMV, times H for that valve, minus PLV, minus P aorta, divided by CLV, as a function of time, times the resistance of the aortic valve, AB, times the step function that corresponds to this valve. Then the third equation, the derivative of the pressure in the aorta with respect to time is equal to minus one over the compliance of the aorta times QAO plus PLV minus pressure of the aorta divided by CAO RAO or RAV, sorry, this is the resistance on the uh, atrial uh, aortic valve times H of these particular pressure difference. Then the fourth equation will be the equation for the flow. The QAO as a function of time is one over LAO. PAO minus RAO over LAO times Q aorta minus one over LAO P systemic. And the final equation is the equation for the systemic pressure one over R systemic, C systemic, times PLA, pressure of the left atrium, my, plus one over C systemic, flow of the aorta, minus one over R systemic, C systemic, times the systemic pressure. And that's it. These are the four, the, the five equations for the five state variables. And everything in these equations is uh, dependent on state variables. So this is a set of five equations with five unknowns. All right. So these are five equations for the five state variables. which in order are, again, PLA, PLV, PAO, QAO, and the systemic pressure. So four pressures and one flow embedded into that equation. Now the problem, again, is we have, four, we have two valves, hence leading to four possible switch states depending on whether this valve is open 
or close and whether these valves open or close. So these valve is the same as this valve and these valve is the same as this valve. This is the, the valve between LA and LV, left atrium and left ventricle. And this is the valve between left ventricle and aorta, this one and this one. All right, so depending on whether this is one or zero, these equations will actually be slightly different uh, from each other. So let's look at the switch states. So switch state one. So the switch state one, we're going to call that state when the mitral valve is open. That means PLA is larger than PLV and the aortic valve is open. That means that PLV is larger than the pressure in the aorta. So when state variable one is larger than state variable two and state variable two is larger than state variable three, then we reach switch state number one because the two valves are open. And in the case of two valves are open, all these H's are equal to one. And therefore you have coefficients here, this H, this H, this H, and this H are one. And these coefficients are multiplying state variables, PLA, PLV, PLA, PLV, PLV, PAO, and PLV, PAO on these equations one, two, and three. So equations one, two, and three are actually altered uh, to include those state variables. So A1, let's try to draw the um, matrix, the 555 matrix A1. So that would include, so multiplying in equation number one, multiplying PLA, which is state variable number one on the right hand side, we have these coefficient and we have these coefficient right here because H is equal to one. So that would be minus one over R systemic CLA minus one over RMV CLA. That's uh, coefficient number one. So what multiplies PLV? In this case, the only thing that multiplies PLV is minus minus one over RMV CLA. So that would be one positive R M V C L A. What multiplies the third state variable, which is PAO? Nothing in that equation. What multiplies the fourth state variable, which is QAO? Nothing. So this will be zero. This will be zero. And the last one is what multiplies P systemic. And P systemic is being multiplied by positive one over R systemic C L A. So this will be one over R systemic C L A. So let me close this. Hopefully we'll be able to fit all five rows here. So let's look at equation number two. What multiplies PLA? PLA is being multiplied by these coefficient when H is equal to one, which is the case for the switch state. So this will be one RMV CLV, which is a function of time. All right, so let's see what multiplies the second state variable, which is PLV. Multiplying the second state variable, we have these coefficient. We have the negative of one over CLV RMB, and we have the negative of CLV RAB. Okay, so we have three terms here. We're going to call all these negative, and this will be one over CLV, DCLV, DT, plus one over. RMV CLV plus one over RAV CLV. So this is the second coefficient. We're still missing three coefficients. Okay, that's a negative of all these. The third coefficient will be what multiplies the aortic pressure. And multiplying the aortic pressure, we only have the negative of the negative of one over CLV RAV. So that would be positive one over RAV CLV. Again, this is not multiplying this. This is just a third coefficient on this row. Okay, these is not multiplying these. This is the first coefficient, the second coefficient, and the third coefficient on this row. And then the last two coefficients are zero and zero. Okay, or 
that doesn't line up correctly, but you get the point. This is coefficient one, coefficient two, coefficient three, coefficient four and five of that particular row. The third equation, okay, slightly simpler. Nothing multiplies the first state variable, which is PLA. So the first term is zero. Um, PLV is being multiplied by these coefficients because H is equal to one. So that would be um, positive one over R A V C A O. Okay. Um, the third state variable, which is P A O, is being multiplied by the negative of the same coefficient here. So it would be minus one over R A V C A O. The what multiplies the uh, fourth state variable, which is Q A O, is minus one over C A O. So the fourth coefficient is minus one over CAO. And the last coefficient is equal to zero because nothing multiplies, these are the five coefficients, nothing multiplies the systemic pressure and equation number, number three. Okay, now equations four and five, nothing changes in equations four and five depending on the switch states because there's no vowels affecting equations four and five. So these equations are straightforward and they just simply become zero zero one over l a o minus r a o over l a o minus one over l a o that's equation number four and equation number five is also not affected by the ball by the valve so this will simply be um one over r systemic uh, c systemic Coefficient number one, uh, multiplying the second state variable, which Q of E is nothing, zero. Multiplying the third state variable, which is PAO, is nothing, so this is another zero. Multiplying the fourth state variable, which is the flow at QAO, is one over this is systemic compliance. And multiplying the fifth state variable, which is the pressure in the systemic circulation, is the negative of these. So minus one over R systemic, C systemic. So this is just state coefficient matrix number one of four possible switch states. When the two valves are open, the two step functions are equal to one. And this is what the coefficient matrix ends up being. All right, so let's look at uh, coefficient matrix number two. And I'm going to try to leave this here so you can continue to write your notes. So switch state number two. And we're going to define that state as the mitral valve being open. So PLA is greater than PLV. And the aortic valve is closed. So PLV is less or equal than pressure of the aorta. So there's not a pressure difference across the valve to be able to open it. So if that's the case, remember the last two equations will look identical. And what will happen is that this H here will be one, and this H will be one, but this H will be zero and this H will be zero. So rendering the second and the third equation slightly simpler. So equation number one doesn't change. Equation number four and equation number five doesn't change. So essentially, that looks like this. So A2 would be, let's see, birth equation for the first equation doesn't change. So it will be minus one over R systemic C of the left atrium minus one over resistance of the mitral valve CLA. So this is term number one in that equation. Term number two in this equation is one over resistance of the mitral valve CLA, compliance of the left atrium. Then uh, term number uh, three is zero, term, term number four is zero, and this term right here is one over the systemic 
So that one doesn't change. Now equation number two, what's going to happen is that what's going to change is that H of the uh, aortic valve is, is going to be zero. So this term is going to go away and this term is going to go away. All right. So here we have, let me see. Yes, that stays the same. So this was going to be one over the resistance of the mitral valve. Um, resistance of the mitral valve times CLV. It's a function of time. That's term number one. Term number two would be one over the compliance of the left ventricle times the derivative of the compliance of the left ventricle plus one over the resistance of the mitral valve times CLV. So that's term number two. And term number three is zero, term number four is zero, and term number five is zero. Equation number three will change completely because the, um, the aortic valve is going to be closed. So this term will disappear and this term will disappear, leaving only this term in the set of equations. So that would be zero, zero, um, zero, minus one over CAO, and zero. And the last two equations will be identical as before. So this will be zero, zero, one over LAO minus RAO over LAO minus one over LAO. And the fifth equation, again, remains exactly the same, will be one divided by R of the systemic circulation times C of the systemic circulation. This will be zero. This will be zero. This will be one over C systemic. And this will be minus one over R systemic, C systemic. That doesn't change. So we have two of the four possible states already figured out, at least the coefficient matrices, right? So equation number three or state number three so switch state three we're going to define is that when the mitral valve is closed so the pressure in the left atrium is less or equal to the pressure of the left ventricle so it doesn't there's not enough pressure to open the valve and the aortic valve is open so the pressure on the left ventricle is larger than the pressure in the aorta. So this is the ejection phase, right? So the mitral valve is closed and all the blood is coming out of the ventricle into the aorta. So we're going to call this A3. And we're going to make this note that uh, in this case, again, equation three and four don't change, right? If we go back to the original equations, Right, this H is going to be zero, this H is going to be zero, this is going to be one, and this is going to be one. So equation one now changes because the mitral valve is closed, so this one will go away, and this one will go away. Out of equation two, this one will go away, this one will go away, right? This one will remain. And uh, out of equation three, nothing changes because the aortic valve is open. So this, I'm going to write this. First term is minus one over R systemic. CLA, then zero for term number two, uh, zero for term number three, zero for term number four, and one over R systemic CLA for term number five. That is equation number one, or row number one. Equation number two, the mitral valve is closed now, so this will be zero, and the aortic valve is open, so this term right here, this one is always remains dclv dt is a function of time plus the contribution from the aortic valve which is rav dclv so that's term number two 
Term number three, again, is the contribution from the aortic valve, one over aortic valve, CLV, it's a function of time. And term number four and term number five are equal to zero. Equation number three is the same as in matrix number one, because now the aortic valve is open, so this will be zero. This will be one, R-A-V-C-A-O. Uh, term number three will be minus one, R A V C A O. And term number four will be minus one over C A O. And term number five is equal to zero. Again, in none of the switch states, equation number three and equation number four change. So this will be zero. This will be zero. Uh, one over the inductance of the aorta minus the resistance of the aorta divided by the inductance of the aorta in term number four and in term number five will minus one over the inductance of the aorta and state system our state equation number five would be one over the resistance of the systemic circulation times the compliance of the systemic circulation this will be zero this will be zero this will be 1 over the systemic compliance, and this will be minus 1 over the systemic resistance times the systemic compliance. Okay, question 4 and equation 5 remain unchanged. Now the final state is the simplest one because it's when the two valves are closed. If the two valves are closed, all the H's in the equation are equal to 0. So this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, and this is zero, rendering equations one, two, and three in their simplest form. So let's look at state system number four, or switch state number four. So this will be A4. So let's call it switch state Four. So the mitral valve is closed. So the left ventricular or left atrial pressure is less or equal to the left ventricular pressure. And the aortic valve is also closed because the left ventricular pressure is less than the aortic pressure. Okay, this is the time when the ventricle is actually gaining pressure, is actually. It's actually compressing, contracting, uh, and nothing is being ejected either from the ventricle, from the atrium to the ventricle, or from the ventricle to the aorta. And that would lead to a system of equations. Well, the system equation is the same. What changes is the matrix, the coefficient matrix. It looks the simplest. Equation number one is just simply this. Um, coefficient number two is zero. Coefficient number three is zero. Coefficient number four is zero. And coefficient number five is this. Equation number two is as simple as it could be. The only contribution you'll get from equation number two, remember, if we look at matrix number one, right? The mitral valve is closed, so this will go away. The mitral valve is closed. The aortic valve is closed, and the aortic valve is closed. The only thing that remain is this in term number two. So this will be in term number two, minus one over CLV, DCLV, DT. This will be zero, this will be zero, and this will be zero. Equation number three, we don't need this anymore. Equation number three looks like zero, 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 minus one over C A O and zero. So only one term survives in equation number three. And equation number four and equation number five remain identical as before. So there's no valves involved. There are no valves involved in these two equations. Minus R A O L L A O minus one over L A O. And equation number five is one over R systemic C systemic zero, zero, one over C systemic, and minus one over R systemic, 
C, systemic. And that's it. So that completes our four coefficient matrices for the same system of, equa system of equations. So remember that we have, again, a system of equations that looks like this. On the left-hand side, we have the derivative of the state variables. Then we have all these multiple coefficient matrix, depending on conditions, we have to switch between one A and another A, multiplying the state variables, plus some vector of right-hand side independent terms. But notice that in all cases, let's go back to the set of equations. If we go back to the set of equations, notice again, that nothing is independent. Everything is multiplying is that every term in these equations, whether h is equal to one or h is or equal to zero, all the terms in these equations are multiplying a state variable. Uh, e either PLA, PLV, PAO, QAO, or QSIS, or PSIS, I'm sorry. Nothing is an independent term. And the reason for that is because we don't have a pump. The only thing that would appear as an external force as an independent term is a voltage or pressure generator like a pump, for example. And that doesn't show up because we don't have one. So therefore, in all switched states, the right-hand side independent term vector B is equal to zero. So for all cases, so i.e., B1, for the case when the two valves are open, B2, for the case when the mitral valve is open and the aortic valve is closed, B3, for the case when uh, the mitral valve is open, it's closed and the aortic valve is open, and B4 are all equal to zero. All right, so this is the set of equations that will be necessary to actually uh, solve this model of the simplified system of the cardiovascular circuit. So let me um, give you some time to write these notes and I am gonna switch to the camera now. So this is the formulation again of the system of equations that is necessary to um, solve or approximate the solution for the simplified system, the simplified LPM, lump parameter model of the cardiovascular circuit. As you, as you can see, the original set of equations is relatively simple, but because we have two valves, then that renders four possible switch states, uh, depending on the conditions of the valve being open or closed. Um, another uh, particularity about the system is that the right-hand side vector B is now zero because there's no pump, no, no external force driving the system. What's, being dri what's driving the system is essentially that external formula or equation for the uh, left ventricular compliance. So this system actually doesn't need a right-hand side vector to yield a non-trivial solution. So, but there are some particularities about solving the system, about approximating this with the uh, Runge-Kutta integrator that we have developed. Particularly, um, we have to be careful with the time stepping because uh, we have four switch states now. So these matrices are going to switch from one and the other. And at those locations, there has to be a, an automatic trigger to actually reduce the size of the, of the time step and adapt it properly to, to satisfy an error or a threshold error. Um, and, and then we have to actually be careful with some, some other aspects. I am not going to go through, um, through a MathCAD formulation today. I'm going to leave it at just the formulation of the set of equations. And next class, we'll look into the particularities of implementing this in MathCAD and actually solving, uh, this, the set of equations, approximating the solution. And I'm going to show you uh, some, some spreadsheets that I put together for this purpose and how we adapt this, the, this method to, to, uh, to actually comply with these set of equations. So this is it for today, and um, I'll see you next class. So goodbye.